Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I hope everyone is doing well today. Uh, today we are taking a look at molarity. Um, question one and question two. I'm not going to talk too much about these problems. Um, they are going to be uh, our do now. It's what we're going to talk about to start class next time. Um, when you are thinking about question one, though, uh, it will be helpful for you to think about percents. What percentage of the solution is salt? Um, that's how you'll determine how salty something will taste. In question two, question two, you're trying to figure out why you can't tell something is concentrated. What do we know in solutions A and B that we don't know about in solutions X and Y? So now, uh, down here, we're coming to some information on concentration. Um, so to determine concentration, we need to know a couple things. The amount of the solute dissolved. The solute is the substance that's being dissolved. And then we also need to know the volume of the liquid. So if we were to look back up here at A, B, X, and Y, um, the solute is salt. We know the solute is salt because that is what's being dissolved in the solution. Um, so then next we have some formulas that we need to know. The first formula is we're starting to look at molarity. Molarity is equal to the moles of solute. Remember, moles of solute is what's being dissolved over liters of solution. Um, remember, guys, it does have to be in liters, so we will be converting to liters whenever we aren't in liters. Um, you can look at this formula. This formula is the same one as right here, except we're using symbols instead. Molarity is symbolized big M, um, and then we divide moles divided by liters. Um, also, remember, guys, to calculate moles, it's the grams divided by the molar mass. Um, in this unit, I'm not going to ask you guys to set up T's. Um, we are a little bit past that. It always ends up whenever you convert moles to grams that you divide by the molar mass. Um, so I will just allow you guys to simply divide. It'll make it a little bit easier. Problems go a little bit quicker. So next, we are coming on question three. So question three, whenever it asks you to uh, calculate concentration, important to look at what kind of concentration it's asking for. This one, we only have molarity, but the next one, we'll learn something called molality, um, which is slightly different. Um, so whenever you see concentration, look for what it's asking you to calculate. Um, so when you look at A, B, and C, A, B, and C are, are kind of like your three steps for calculating concentration. So the first thing is to convert um, your grams to moles. So we know we're starting with 24 grams of NaCl. So we can just simply divide. Remember, guys, I told you that to calculate moles, all we have to do is moles equal grams divided by molar mass. So that's what you're going to see me do here. I'm going to take my 24 grams of NaCl, and I'm going to divide by the molar mass. Remember, guys, whenever we calculate molar masses, we look on the periodic table. So you would add the mass of sodium and the mass of chlorine together. Uh, when you do that, it is 58.443 uh, grams per mole which when you solve would give you 0 0.41212 moles NaCl. Next, sorry, next we're looking at part B. Part B tells us to calculate liters. So we know we have 475 milliliters. To go from milliliters to liters, you simply divide by 1,000. That would give you 0 0.475 liters. Next, uh, we have to remember our uh, concentration. So this is where you divide moles divided by liters. Remember, guys, moles divided by liters would give us molarity. Molarity is what the problem is asking for. So if we do moles divided by liters, you take your 0 0.412, divide by 0 0.475 moles per liters. When you solve, you should get 0 0.867 M. So next, question four. So question four is calculating molarity, except it doesn't walk you through the three steps. So I'll, I'll help you solve 4A, and then afterwards you can mimic what I do in 4A with 4B and 5. So when we look at 4A, remember guys, the first thing to do is to convert our grams into moles. So we can take our 42 0.1 grams. Remember, we just have to divide by the molar mass. Remember, guys, we look at the periodic table to find the molar mass. When you find the molar mass of calcium nitrate, it comes out to 164.086. Then when you solve for that, just type it into your calculator, 0 0.257 moles of calcium nitrate. 
Remember guys, next we need to look, we need to make sure we're in liters. We're given milliliters, so we need to convert. Remember, to convert, all you do is divide by a thousand. So 0 0.7 liters. And then lastly, we need to calculate the molarity. Molarity is moles divided by liters. So we would do big M equals our moles, 0 0.257 over our liters, 0 0.7. Once you solve that, you find that the molarity is 0 0.367 M. So guys, when you calculate molarity, make sure you do the same three steps. Convert grams to moles, convert, mil convert two liters, whatever you're in, and then divide moles divided by liters. So um, mimic my steps in 4B and 5. So the next section, we are learning about dissociation. Dissociation is when an ionic compound dissolves, it dissociates or breaks up into new ions. So we need to focus on the word dissolves. So ions will dissociate. Uh, one sec. Uh, pause. Sorry about that, guys. It seems to be working now. So we need to focus on the word dissolves. So it only, uh, so dissolves means when we would put our ionic compound in water. We would place ionic compound in water. So remember, guys, um, I mean, you need to focus on the word ionic compound. Covalent compounds will not dissociate. Um, they don't dissociate because of the uh, charges. Um, when an ion dissociates, it literally just splits into its ions. Uh, and then remember, we do need to balance. Um, so we need to make sure that we stay neutral on this side. So instead of balancing the amount, I guess you can balance the amount you have, but you could balance the charges. You could see that you have two chlorines on this side, so we need to put a two there. You could, or you could look at it and say that calcium has a plus two charge, chlorine has a negative one charge, so this needs to be two, because two times negative one is negative two. Positive two and negative two would cancel each other out. One thing worth noting is that chlorine is typically a diatomic molecule, but you have to remember that we're dealing with the chlorine ion. We're dealing with the chlorine ion because we have a negative charge. Whenever we have charges, we're dealing with ions and not atoms. Um, you will have to determine charges. Um, remember, guys, when we determine charges, all we do is use our periodic table. Column 1 plus 2, column 2 plus 3. We skip the transition metals. 13 has a plus 3, 14 plus or minus 4, 15, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, and so on, and then 0. Um, so you can use this to help you guys determine charges. Uh, you should have a labeled periodic table somewhere. So then next, we are moving on to question 6. So question 6, we are going to be dealing with our uh, calcium dissociation, uh, calcium chloride dissociation. Remember, we have a 2 here. Um, because we have two chlorines on this side, and then the charges need to be balanced. So question six is asking us how many moles of Ca plus two and how many moles of Cl minus are in this solution. So remember, guys, the coefficients equal the number of moles. So if we have 3.5 moles of this, then how many moles of these would we need? So we look at the coefficients. Uh, whenever you, this is a one-to-one -one ratio, so however many moles of calcium chloride, you're going to have that many moles of calcium plus two ion. Um, we look here, and you would see that this is a one-to-two ratio. So however many moles of calcium chloride, we need to have two times as much um, chlorine I, chloride, chlorine ion. So you do two times three point five, which would give us seven point zero. So then we know that you need 3.5 moles of calcium, positive to calcium ion, and then you need 7 moles of the chlorine ion. So then next, question 7. Question 7, um, we're just changing our uh, unit. So we are starting with molarity. So, um, so what this means is we have 2.5 moles of calcium um, chloride per liter. We are assuming that this is a one liter solution. 
the reason why we assume that it's a one liter solution is to make our math easier. So if we were calculating um, our moles, so we would know that molarity equals moles over liters. If our big M is 2.5 and then we set liters to 1, that means we must have uh, 2.5 moles because 2.5 divided by 1 is 2.5. So then when we're calculating the concentration of Ca plus 2, we just need to do the same thing. Compare our ratio. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So if you have 2.5 moles of calcium chloride, that means you would have 2.5 moles of sorry, moles, moles of calcium ion, Ca plus 2. So then next we can look at the concentration of the chlorine ion. So we would look at the chlorine ion. Again, remember it's a one-to-two ratio. If you're starting with 2.5 moles, we need to have double that. So you would take your 2.5, multiply by 2, and would give us 5.0 moles of chloride, which is chlorine ion. So then questions 8, 9, and 10 are similar to 6, 7, A, and B. So start by writing your dissociation. So remember, your Na3P is going to break up into its ions. You have to include its charges and then balance its charges. Remember, guys, the charges are determined by the periodic table. So you can pause in the correct column if you need to and use this to help you. Um, then use the, the coefficients to calculate the amount of um, moles of the products. Um, please, if you have any questions, circle them and bring them to class. I uh, hope everyone has a good day.